Welcome to the Midweek Market Update, where I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on SPY, the Qs, and IWM. After that, we will be taking a brief tour through our core list of companies. And if you stick with me towards the end of the video, I've got four additional trade ideas to share with you. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let's kick off today's S&P analysis as we always do with our sectors, who was leading, who was losing, and where was the weight. So you can see in the top slot today, leading the pack, we have the XLC for the communication sector. They were up 1.65% on the day's session, whereas down at the bottom of the barrel, we see the XLU for the utility sector down 1.33% on on the day's session. As we know, the XLC is a heavier weight risk on sector. It's not the heaviest of them all, but it's certainly up there in terms of sector weighting. So it's nice to see that as we got a follow through day here in the S&P 500. The XLU is more defensive in nature. So again, it makes sense and it's okay to see that down at the bottom of the barrel. So nice to see a positive sector distribution in terms of risk on risk off so far. Of course, we'll dive into that when we get to the ratio grid in a moment. But for now, where were the heavier weighted sectors? The XLK, the heaviest of them all, the tech sector was up 1.56% on the day session. Nice and green there. The XLF for the financial sector was also green, but not as much, obviously a little bit more neutral there, up 0.37% on the day session. And then the XLV for the healthcare sector, third heaviest weight that we're watching, second by market cap, was down in the dumps, uh, down 0.99% on the day's session. So a little bit more of a mixed bag there. But again, if we just think about the heaviest weighted sector, the most important one of them all, the XLK right up here, nice to see that towards the top of the list. Let's go ahead and take a look through these structural charts now and just sort of determine what's continuing to evolve from a trend perspective. So in the XLC, we have a nice break of this level right here. You could start to look at this as a balance area. We have broken the balance to the upside. We're typically looking for a range double, and that would bring us closer to the 60 handle, which is in the midpoint of this prior consolidation range. Could I see that being a reasonable target on this breakout? Absolutely. Do I see it being a reasonable target into the end of the week? And eh, not quite. That would stream... Uh, seem like a little bit of a stretch here. The reason I say that is because we're coming all the way from the bottom straight to the top without a reasonable higher low pullback first. Notice here, even on the red bar, we do set a higher low and a higher high. So there technically hasn't been a major pullback. Therefore, this is one swoop, one, one fell swoop, one move, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, a reasonable pullback could be expected now that we've breached the uh, breakout point here at 57. So where would a reasonable pullback take us to? Well, in an ideal world, we would stay above 57, put in a bull flag that would look like this, and then we'll break out over time to get to that 60 mark. In a not so ideal world, which is still okay, but uh, just not quite as picture perfect, we would just move back down to the high of the red uh, candle bar right here around 56 quarter. Okay, so ideal picture perfect, rainbows and butterflies, and then still okay would be something that looks like this over time with a deeper pullback to that 57 quarter mark, or 56 quarter mark, excuse me, that we just identified. So overall, really positive bullish development here on the breakout in the XLC. Next up, we've got the XLY for the consumer discretionary sector. What's going on from this perspective? Certainly a breakout starting early on the Tuesday session. You can see we closed that daily bar above 148.25, and we did get some follow through on today's session. Just like in the XLC, I would say that we're coming all the way from the bottom through the breakout level. Would it be reasonable to expect the pullback? Absolutely. In an ideal world, again, rainbows and butterflies, it's above 148.25, and that's also the red bar high from right in here as well. So that to me is sort of, you know, that's what I would want to see happen. If we really start failing back down underneath 148.25, it's, you know, it's not as ideal is, is basically what I would leave it at here because we don't really have clear structure to be identifying uh, as newfound support. Maybe the 50 SMA starts to act as support that would obviously produce a higher low. Obviously still the support trend line would also uh, produce a higher low, but failing this breakout level to that extent would be no good no good. Okay. So just to sum it up here in the XLY, 148.25 is your primary watch into the remainder of the week. Is anything going on here in the pre-market? Obviously, Tesla, the bit, one of the bigger components of XLY reported after the bell. You can see the current bid ask spread is 151.99, 151.25. So it's really not, it's unchanged essentially. It's still hanging out right up here. No major impact from Tesla. Continuing along, let's get into the XLK, the tech sector, the heaviest weighted sector of them all, just like the XLY, the breakout started early on on the Tuesday session, follow through on Wednesday today. We are firmly above 134. We filled this gap in the chart from over here. That strikes me as healthy. Could we expect the pullback? Yes. What is the pullback level? 134 is rainbows and butterflies breaking out for continuation to the top end of that next balance range overhead. Over time would be the bullish look here in the XLK. 
failing underneath 134. Higher low needs to be in place in this one above 131.50. There's really no wiggle room uh, underneath that, right? If we were to break down underneath, that to me would again start to trigger a little bit more of an aggressive pullback, something that would sort of confirm this as a fake break at that point in time. Obviously, a bigger red flag for the marketplace. So again, 134 is probably your must uh, or ideal level, and then 131.50 is your must watch. No ifs, ands, or buts about it here in the XLK. Next up, energy sector, lightweight sector. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time here, really just sideways. It's not overly aggressive trend to the upside. No major red flag strikes me as fine for the marketplace. XLI for industrials breaking out of this balance right here. Just the start of it. Again, we're coming from the bottom all the way up to the top. Is a pullback expected? Yeah. Are we at the 50 SMA? Yeah. Is it a lighter weight sector? Yeah. It's still technically 7%. Um, but uh, overall, it's not going to save the day if it continues to break out and the XLK is failing, and it's not going to drag the market lower if a aggressive pullback happens here and the XLK is holding up just fine. So really more neutral here in the XLI. If anything, this breakout of the balance area strikes me as a little bit of added bullish pressure to the marketplace overall. Next up, the XLF financials. Let's spend a little bit of time here because it is the important sector. It's finally kicking into gear. The main thing that you need to focus on is the recapture of this big, big level in financials here around 32.45, 32.50. We've been discussing it for what feels like forever. On the Tuesday session, we finally got a daily candle bar that closed above, and we confirmed that strong close above with price action here on the Wednesday session. So I love what I'm seeing here in the XLF. At this point in time, we want to remain above that 32.50. I would say, though, because we did set a new lower low here and we've come all the way up from the bottom to that 50 SMA, even if we were to get a higher low pullback, has to hold 32. As long as we're above 32, I would give it the benefit of the doubt. Consider this a bull flag kind of forming in here. Then eventually, maybe we can continue on upwards to fill this gap overhead, which of course would be another positive bullish development for the S&P 500. So deepest pullbacks has to hold 32. No arguments there. Uh, you know, it just, it can't afford to break that. If it does, we're just really in more of a neutral environment chopping around, and this would not be as bullish of an indication for the S&P 500 finding an overall bottom. So those are my thoughts there, but as of right now, it is showing improving with some price acceptance above on the day's session. Next up, we've got the XLB material sector, really lightweight sector, just like energy kind of sideways in this overall range. Doesn't really strike me as a major red flag. Fine, no concern here moving along real estate sector really lightweight as well again with rate increases being the concern here a pullback off the top of the range again bring us to the midpoint is that expected maybe with the big inverted hammer that printed on the day's session rejecting the 50 SMA again I'm not concerned with it it's a lightweight sector uh, it's not aggressively breaking down and making new lower lows underneath here no red flags moving on next up the XLP what's going on in the consumer staple space look at this chart guys absolutely fantastic. We couldn't have asked for anything better from the consumer staples, right? We wanted to see the XLK. We wanted to see the XLY, even XLF break out and make the bullish move first. And then this can follow suit. And as you can see, we're getting the bullish moves in the XLY, the XLK, the XLF. Now it's just a matter of, okay, if those hold, can we see the XLP catch up and start to break out as well? That is the proper sort of order, if you will, of how things would go down here. Because as we know, the XLP is technically a D for defensive sector. So we want to see this lagging the breakout, but as long as it's holding sideways in this range, all good. No major red flags for the marketplace here. I like what I'm seeing. Next up, XLV healthcare sector, the second heaviest weight by market cap here, perhaps another fairly important one. This is our monthly balance range that we've been talking about. Our star player was on the field, stepped off, stepped back on, broke a sort of ankle and is now just on the bench getting some ice from the athletic director or, you know, whatever uh, medic sort of help is on the sidelines of sports games. You get the gist. You can tell how much of a sports fan I am, uh, or not, rather. <laughs> but anyways, sideways in this overall range right here, absolutely fine. Um, it, it pulled its weight during this major run right here in that big rotation. Now it's cooling off. It needs to pass the baton more firmly over to the XLK, really actually the XLF. I would say the XLK has done its job. It's broken out. Obviously it's up and over that level, but it needs to pass the baton to the XLF in terms of relative strength here and let the XLF really catch up. We'll see that in the ratio grid in just a moment as well. I'm not concerned with this unless we were to breach and get firm price acceptance underneath the lows of this flag and balance range. 
range around 127. Price acceptance down here strikes me as concerning because we know that 125 is the must hold level for the monthly balance area, right? So continue to watch this as neutral currently, but 127 is a big line in the sand here in the short term. Last but not least, the utility sector. We're not going to forget about you. We're just going sideways, right? So no big deal, no major red flags. It's a defensive sector to see it pulling in a little bit. No major red flags again, unless we were to take this out aggressively and go back into waterfall mode from in here. Uh, I'm just not seeing any major threat right now in the utility sector to the marketplace overall. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek at the sector grid now. If you're not familiar with the sector ratio grid, go ahead and check this video out in the top right hand corner. It shows you how to set this up and we'll talk about what it means right now. So in the XLK, what do we see? Or actually, let's not talk about the XLK individually just yet, but the top four. All right, top four are our risk on sectors. These are the more aggressive growth sectors. We want to see them leading the pack, pointing upwards if the market's going to make a turn. What do we see? XLK, glaring difference now, screaming to the upside, breaking out of this uh, sort of descending triangle. Higher, obviously, well above an upward sloping or actually more neutral sloping 50 SMA. That's the gold line. Really positive development. We can give a firm check mark to the XLK indicating risk on. XLV, we saw the pullback, we saw the consolidation, but is it still in an overall glare? daily uptrend here? Absolutely. So I'll put a check mark there. It does need to start to perk back up and reverse off of this 50 SMA, but solid move still, solid trend still in the XLV ratio. So two checks so far. All we really need is one more to signal risk on. And is it going to happen? Absolutely. Look at your XLY perking up here, risk kind of on above that 50 SMA and breaking out of what was a pretty sideways range from right around in here. Could it be better? Absolutely. So maybe this is like an iffy check mark, right? Something like that. But it certainly is a dramatic improvement from what we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks where it was doing nothing and really just kind of going sideways. So a clear perking up in the XLY. Last but not least, the XLF, we know that it's really not that great from a ratio perspective. If we do something like this, there was the descending triangle. We've broken down. Fake break, we're back inside, but we're not nearly, you know, close to breaking out up and over the 50 SMA, the gold line, which is why we were discussing maybe the relative strength baton needs to be passed from the XLV down to the XLF to help sort of, you know, show and prove and bring some strength into the financial sector, which would then, you know, all four is definitely going to confirm more of a risk on look for our marketplace of so solid development there. The bottom four are our risk off sectors. Now, what do we see here? XLP rolling over again at a pretty neutral, I would say it's upward sloping 50 SMA, but pullback into it is fairly aggressive coming off those highs. XLE sideways underneath a neutral 50 SMA. XLRE for real estate sideways tangled up around a 50 SMA that's going sideways and utilities breaking down firmly underneath its upward sloping uh, 50 SMA. So what does that tell us about risk off? It is certainly starting to turn off. Okay. So hopefully you can see that monitoring these sector ratios is pretty important in terms of determining the turn in the marketplace. Everybody was overly bearish on the CPI, but the ratio grid here was actually improving the entire time, which is one of the pieces, uh, the fundamental pieces of the analysis here that has helped us maintain a bullish stance in the market the past couple of days. Enough about that. Let's get on over to the TNX and take a look at our sort of 10 year rate. Okay, so this of course is the interest rate. It's going sideways. What does that mean? It means tech is really content here, which is why it's been able to make that breakout. If this were to perk up and go on a similar run to like what we saw in here, that would be a little bit more of a red flag. Maybe we get a fake breakout in the XLK. That would obviously be concerning for a fake out in the broad market as a whole. So watch interest rates here. It's really, really, really gonna come down to next Wednesday. So we'll put a W here and at 2 p.m. we're gonna get all of the uh, FOMC Fed announcements, right? So the FOMC um, target rate, we're going to get the press conference from Jerome Powell and the statement as well. So all of that stuff comes out next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Please be aware of some volatility around that point in time. But for now, going sideways in here, the implications for the remainder of the week is neutral, right? This is actually a decent look for our XLK. We want to avoid breakouts and breakdowns to slightly lower would be okay here in the TNX. Let's continue along and take a look at the VIX, which is going to be our volatility index. This is breaking down out of the box of wickedness. It's just one day to the downside. So it's not like we're out of the woods yet. We're not out of the box of wickedness quite, quite yet, but it is certainly a step in the right direction. As we've been saying, the primary look for a bottom at this point in time, like a, a major sort of shift in sentiment in the marketplace would be the VIX coming back down underneath 2050. At this point in time, I just don't think that there's enough 
fear in the marketplace currently for a big capitulation spike up around that 40 handle. So the dribbling lower of the VIX stripes, strikes me, excuse me, as a big positive development here uh, outside of the box of wickedness. And if we go on over to the VIX, um, obviously we know, and we've been discussing this for quite some time, right? As this sits at pretty historic levels underneath that 103 floor, sure, it means that no one's hedged, no one's buying puts in the SPY, no one's buying calls in the VIX. It opens up the door for a spiral out of control if a sell were to come. But the other thing that this just has to show you is think about it from just a logical perspective. If no one's buying puts in the SPY, if no one's buying calls in the VIX, then what does that mean? Again, there's no fear in the marketplace, which is going to be something that would you know, fear would typically prevent the market from trending higher. If the fear's not there, then the market, ipso facto, should trend higher, right? Which it is starting to do. And that's what these reads are kind of indicating here, at least on a day-to-day -day perspective, right? The fact that this is so low, sure, it means that there's some risk in the marketplace, but there's also no fear, which is allowing the market to move higher as well. Something that I do want to point out here, um, let's go to the SPY. And we'll talk about daily levels in just a second here. But if we go to the trade tab, this is kind of important here. Um, could we see a gamma squeeze is the question I want to ask. And a gamma squeeze to the upside based on call buying, okay? So you'll notice that, yeah, technically speaking, there were some more puts bought than calls on the day session. But the important part is the sizzle index right on over here. If you notice, the call sizzle index was actually up one5 three, six on the day session. All that means is that there were one and a half times the amount of calls being bought on today's session, as opposed to the average of the last five rolling days of volume in the SPY. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. All it means is that there was an increase in call buying activity on a relative basis today, as compared to the last five trading days. So a gamma squeeze would mean that people are buying calls. What does that mean for the market makers, right? They have to sell the calls, so they're technically negative delta, right? As we get more bullish and bullish and bullish, those market makers are negative delta. They don't want to lose money. What do they have to do? They have to go positive delta, right? So how do they do that? They do a couple of things. They either buy SPY shares, increasing buying pressure, or they buy ES futures, right? Which is obviously going to impact the you know uh, direction of the SPY as well. So gamma squeeze gets to look something like that, right, to the upside. So just keep an eye on the call sizzle index here as really there's no fear in the marketplace. If this call sizzle starts to get out of control to the upside, I could I could theoretically see a gamma squeeze happening here. Um, you know, one, squeezing shorts, everybody who is just like bear market's got to send us to zero. And two, the whole market maker situation that we just discussed from a gamma perspective. So that's a little bit of an aside. We don't often talk about those things, but it is on the top of my mind, especially after looking at the V. VIX being so low for so long and just the lack of fear out there in the marketplace. Nonetheless, what do we have for tradable levels into the remainder of the week here, kicking things off on our SPY daily time frame chart? What do we see? So here is the breakout level, right? You can clearly see we're up and over that 389.75 bullish development in the chart. The breakout also recaptured the resistance trend line, the 50 SMA. And if we take out some Fibonacci's, because we were doing this in the weekly watch this video from high to low here, notice that we are above the 50 50%. We've reclaimed that. We did not reclaim the 61.8, but that's because this is also a gap overhead, which we should start thinking about as the next possible setup. So cleaning that up, uh, we're above the 50% mark, but below the 61.8. Reasonable consolidation happening here cools off into the end of the week. We're at the top edge of the weekly expected move. It allows for a reset. And then early next week, maybe there's a break that does something like this. Your next long trade here essentially is up and over 395.50 after either consolidation or just continuation. Uh, and then the target is 401.39. Now in an ideal world, we would consolidate first and then break after we maybe have like a one or a two bar setup here. So consolidation, two bar highs break off to the races, right? That's an easy trade to identify and set up. If you were to just long it here on the open, it's just a little bit tough because we don't exactly know where the stop loss would go unless we're using like a five or a 15 minute pattern, which of course we can't really identify on, you know, uh, analysis videos like what we're doing right now. So overall, the chart is poised in a very bullish position, taking out all of that resistance that we just discussed with a gap overhead as the next theoretical target here. There's not a whole lot of uh, things stopping us from moving higher, essentially, is the takeaway there. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that Monday, everybody and their sister was bearish, right? It was a big rejection off of the triple top. I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. So the fact that we have now rebounded once again, as we were talking about and discussing in the weekly watch list video, it sucked in a lot of shorts here 
who were assuming that, again, we were just rejecting off the top of the range, the market had to go lower. You can go back and watch the pre-market live streams. We didn't buy the theory, and now we're higher. The reason I even mention this is because those shorts are the fuel to send the market higher in the first place. As they close out, that's added buying pressure, allowing the market to move higher here. So is the market quote unquote extended? Again, you know, we've come from the bottom to the top into resistance, we're through resistance. It might feel extended in the short term, but really, uh, you know, the, the ammo is in the tank essentially for the market to continue to move higher is what I'm getting at. So from a risk perspective, yes, consolidation would be good, but if we just break, it's not like the market's overcooked here. The only concern I would have is the weekly expected move, the options market pricing in that this is kind of all we've got in the tank. That's the major concern, not so much the distance that we've traveled thus far. Hopefully that made sense and wasn't overly confusing. Pullback levels, of course, the breakout level here, 389.75, must hold, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, 386. 386 was our old blue line from back in here. We flipped it to gray. It didn't need to be blue any longer. There's no way around it. That needs to hold on the deepest of pullbacks here, all right? So that's the SPY in a nutshell, uh, I suppose we could take a look at our internals. Let's go ahead and fire those up. If you don't know about the internals, I've got a video for you, top right-hand corner. What's going on here? Does it confirm or deny any of the sort of assumptions that we're making in the marketplace thus far? I would say no, right? Obviously, you can see that on the Monday session, positive volume. Tuesday session, really significant positive volume up and over that 300 million mark. And on today's session, although it was more balanced back and forth, we did have more inflows as opposed to outflows, and the breaths were relatively positive, especially in the NASDAQ, okay? So the tech sector, being the heaviest weighted component strikes me as a positive indication, uh, giving more confidence to this rally instead of less. What's going on in the advanced decline line? Again, everything was positive throughout the entirety of the week. You can see we fell out of trend zone on Monday, which is fine. Overcorrelated here has been corrected by the move lower inside of the advanced decline line on the today's session, right? This sideways back and forth two-sided activity that we saw today was indicative of market rotation, which was a slight concern of ours in the pre-market prep session, but that has since been corrected. So do not carry this forward as a major concern anymore for the marketplace. The ticks, uh, bullish, right? Bullish across the board, a little bit of a dip there on the Monday session, but the fact that Monday was so red and this wasn't more red, no major red flags. <laughs> it said red a bunch of times there, but you get the gist, right? Internals are essentially confirming we should have more confidence in this rally Instead of saying, oh, it's got to fade, it's got to go lower, the market's going to zero, the underpinnings of the market are supporting the move that we have seen thus far across the board. Last but not least for the S&P 500 is none other than our market profile. Some terms that I use, if you don't know what this is, it's all covered in this video in the top right-hand corner. I've got you covered with all the information you need to decipher these videos. So with that being said, we do have a massive massive poor high up here at the top of our ES on the day's session. Even if we do something like this, you can see we have two F periods sticking out, but look at how mechanical this level is right underneath. It's the value area high as well. For all intents and purposes, if 39.75 is revisited, that needs repair in terms of a structural end of the auction, right? You have all of these longs pressed up against this area. We've pulled back obviously since then. Obviously the close was a little bit more middled there. Uh, but nonetheless, if we were to revisit that, I would expect a quick pop through it as anyone who is short after identifying that has likely just placed a quick stop up and over those highs there. So that's the main takeaway from the market profile. The other thing I would say is that obviously value and the point of control did shift higher on today's session from there to there. And also on the Tuesday session, it's not like it was a short covering rally only. There was good buying throughout the entirety of the profile. Notice how there's a little volume distribution down here. It's not paper thin like you would typically see in a P-shaped profile short covering like in here. So this this strikes me as concerning when you have that thin volume there, but the fact that on Tuesday we have a distribution of volume here, sure the most of it is up at the top, but there's still a distribution, strikes me as okay from a structural perspective. It wasn't just short covering on the open only that caused the trend day to kick off. So that's what I've got for you from the market profile perspective. Let's go ahead and get back to the platform here and round out the broad market with the QQQ and then of course IWM what's going on with small caps. We'll get to them in just a second, but for now, QQQ is clearly filled the gap overhead, so a little bit more relative strength as compared to the SPY. You can see that the ascending triangle remains intact. We've broken out up and over 296. Any pullbacks here, just wanna hold that for a break, retest, look for long entries. So if we were to print a daily hammer candle down here, if we come in and you notice on like a 15 or a five minute chart, a double bottom around 296, those pullbacks would strike me as viable here inside of the triple Qs. To the upside, if we just get continuation, this one to me strikes me as a little bit more of a stretch in 
terms of being slightly overbought, okay, slightly overbought here up towards this resistance point. 304 is the bottom end of this range here. The reason I'm sort of in that camp is because these people still could become overhead supply who are looking to sell for a break even. They've now had to hold for, I don't know, a month and a half, two months just to get back to break even. If they decide to sell and then look for a better entry point or they're still not convinced the market's going higher, all I'm getting at is that turns into added selling pressure at this area of resistance based on overhead supply being located at this area. So the location piece is kind of what's important here in the QQQ. So be mindful of pullbacks or above the top edge of the weekly expected move. 296 is your level to watch on the sort of rainbows and butterfly pullback. Anything underneath that needs to hold 290.75. 290.75 is ultimately your blue line equivalent that we just discussed in the S&P 500. There's some more nuanced levels in between here, but uh, for the daily time frame perspective, 290.75 would be the line in the sand. Anything underneath that really starts to become more of a fake breakout as we were discussing in some of the sector charts. Next up, IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps, again, a breakout of the uh, ascending triangle pressure cooker top. We're above 177.60. All good from that perspective. This gap overhead is the target up next over 180.150, fills up towards 183.57. Then your dominant resistance trend line from the all-time high is coming into play there. Pullbacks want to hold 177.60 here, so consolidation is bullish, and then a breakout can continue after a bull flag gets put into place. Your next level underneath, so to speak, would be the red candle high right here and 50 SMA at 176 as sort of your uh, equivalent line in the sand. You don't really want to see it much deeper than that as we've been discussing so far across the remainder or the other components of the broad market. So that's your IWM. And again, this is really more of a risk on risk off signal. And right now it's clearly saying risk on, right? We're breaking out of this ascending triangle. There's at least a chance here for the market to turn back to the upside with this relative strength in small caps. Let's get into the nitty gritty of our core list of companies here. See what's going on from that perspective. Apple chart looks fantastic. It continues to look fantastic. You can't ask for anything better here. So higher lows are obviously in place, higher highs as well in place. We are breaking out of a three-day balance in here, and now we're moving to the upside. So the next target overhead is 155.75, perhaps better illustrated on an hourly time frame. A 30-minute time frame could be used as well. That's coming from right around in here, right? So we break down from this set of lows. As we rally, that's where the next lower high rejection comes from. So that's your target, 155.75. After that, you can clearly see that's your next level, 159.25. Uh, if we go back to the daily time frame, we did close the bar above 152.20, which as we know, is a really, really important level here from the daily perspective. I've got a six month chart on right now. If I go to a yearly, you can see there we go. Resistance, resistance, or excuse me, support, 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 broke for then resistance. And now we're back above. So a critical recapture here inside of Apple. I like the continued bullish developments that we're seeing in the chart. Again, be mindful of a little bit of pullback risk. Deepest pullbacks want to hold 148.25 going forward here inside of Apple. Next up, Netflix. What's going on with Netflix? Obviously reporting earnings uh, after the close yesterday. Big gap up. It was even higher at one point in time, but you can see we pulled back, filled the gap, and then rallied higher. An incredible show of strength from the buyers out there inside of Netflix. And this is all happening, of course, on big, big, uh, you know, buying volume. So for all intents and purposes, if the sellers were going to step up at the, <coughs> excuse me, apologies about the voice, uh, if the sellers were going to step up at these higher prices and sell it into the dirt, why were they not able to even put it back down into the prior day's range? To me, very bullish indication there inside of Netflix. We are outside of my sort of no touch zone, which was back down here. Um, I'm not sure I would chase the floating balloon now, but it's at least on my radar for long sided trades. If we can get a reasonable pullback and then some sort of continuation with tight risk, maybe we put in like a, a three bar setup or something, you know, a little consolidation, break the two day highs, something like that. That would be reasonable for a setup here inside of Netflix, but certainly favoring long side based on the big failure of sellers to even dip a toe firmly inside of the prior day's range. Next up, Tesla reported earnings after the bell today. Let's go ahead and flip on Let's go to the hourly and we'll just quickly turn on. Where am I going? Here we go. The extended hour session. What's going on from an earnings perspective? So we had a compression day. I mean, the opening range defined the range for the day. You can clearly see at one point in time, earnings were great and we were hanging out up here. Now we're a little bit lower. We're hanging out a little bit higher. This is going to be a patience play. Uh, just knowing that we're just scratching on a slight gap up. Let's go to the daily time frame chart and analyze here. Uh, we're just stuck in a range, guys. There's really not a whole lot. We're still compressing, right? You could even go as far as to say it's a symmetrical triangle at this point in time, something that looks like this, right? We're compressing. So if we can clearly get up and over uh, 762, that's probably the next trade 
clear the trend line, clear the 762. It's game on to 780. And then after that, we open up the door a little bit larger to 823. So I think Tesla is really going to be a patience play and see where it ultimately lands for tomorrow's session. Do we get a firm gap up? Do we sort of open in range? What's the deal there? Again, kind of patience. We can't analyze that quite yet until we actually get the open for tomorrow. If we open on a gap up, I would just say, you know, be mindful of your upside swings here. Tesla's kind of a momentum stock. I would watch for that sort of to uh, continue to the upside if we can breach 762. If we open neutral inside of range, it just means breakouts will be over the high of day, right? Next up, AMD. What's going on with AMDizzle as we've been calling it in the pre-market preps? You can clearly see running strong to the upside. Ideal consolidation happens above 88 and we're targeting the gap overhead. Deepest pullbacks want to hold this area right here, 8044 for an inverted head and shoulders on the daily time frame. That would be more of the playable uh, long-term long reversal. If you're someone who's into swing trading, multi-month options, I suppose, or even just shares, right? That's kind of the pattern that you're scouting for, or just the first viable pullback ultimately. It doesn't have to go all the way to 8044, but some sort of pullback, maybe it's 8425. That would be another reasonable one here. For day traders, again, 88 and then continuation. That's the ideal bull play. Next up, sort of medium term play would be something like this. And the deeper inverted head and shoulders as we just covered is 8044. Nonetheless, really liking the recapture of 8025. It's now proven essentially that we do not have the possibility for a weekly break retest and then lower, right? We've clearly recaptured that zone, which puts this, you know, firmly back into bull territory. Next up, Meta, what's going on here? Breaking out of the multi-day range from here, multi-week range, really. Uh, solid close on the Tuesday session through the 50 SMA on today's session, retracing all of this thin structure. The next major target overhead is 188.50. This 183.29 is coming from prior rejection points here. And then the breakdown, it, you know, it opened and fell immediately. That's where that level is coming from. So again, pullback that does something like this probably wants to be above the 50 SMA is a rainbows and butterfly type world. And then looking for a breakout over that in the sort of not rainbows and butterfly world, your 172.56 top of this balance right here wants to act as support for a break retest and then higher. Be on the lookout for hammer candles. You guys know the deal, right? Double bottoms, inverted head and shoulders, the whole nine yards at that level. NVIDIA is up next. What's going on in the chip space? Very, very strong. Uh, starting to fill this gap, not all the way home, but definitely a solid look here. Just like AMD, the longer term look would be for an inverted head and shoulders. Some sort of pullback into this 160 level is probably the line in the sand there. You don't really want to see it back down underneath the neckline of this double bottom right here. Of course, that's where your 160 is coming from. In a you know day trader's world, you could probably look for, uh, you could start looking for a pullback, I would say, off of this gap fill area and this overhead supply. Very similar to what we just discussed in the QQ. Q, right? So that same theory really applies from a psychology perspective and location perspective here inside of NVIDIA. So be mindful of that as we come into this. If you start to see reversal patterns, inverted hammers, maybe the pullback comes. It doesn't mean you have to short for it, but be ready for it. And then if it comes into these areas of support, that's where you would want to start looking for new longs on a higher low, right? From here to even here or here is a very obvious higher low. So that's NVIDIA in the sort of medium to long term. Again, day traders, maybe consolidation bar, then a breakout for a three bar play. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Next up, Microsoft. What's going on here? But overall, I mean, you can clearly see a, a shift in tone across the entire marketplace, right? So Microsoft is the only one still kind of underneath a kind of nasty resistance trend line here. We clearly got a different type of bar to print. It's already an inverted hammer. It did not make it up to this double top zone. A little bit more bearish, especially after breaking out of a three-day balance here. Why did it not uh, close a little bit more firmly up towards these highs? So a little bit skeptical of Microsoft. I think almost everything else that we've seen, with the exception of Tesla maybe, which was just being neutral before earnings, is much more bullish, right? So Microsoft, eh, probably not where the relative strengths at. I would look at other opportunities first. If this were to fail back down underneath 260.25, because it is the most relatively weak, I would say that would set up a short trade into these lows around 252.50, right? So so that would be a look above and fail here on the daily time frame. Target is the bottom end of the range. Last but not least, the mini beast. We've got Amazon taking off like a rocket ship to the upside on the day's session. We talked about 117 in the pre-market prep. We didn't even get the pullback to it. It was basically just off to the races on the day's session. So overall, really, really solid move. That goes without saying. Would I chase it here? Probably not. We're in this overhead supply. We're coming into resistance. Um, you know, we've made the move from the bottom to the top with no major pullback, no lower low on a bar by bar perspective. 
negative. So just be mindful of that into the remainder of the week here. Amazon is probably not a chase long. It's wait for a reasonable pullback. You know, 117 strikes me as a solid level to hold here for a break retest and then go back to the upside inside of Amazon. So that's what we've got in the core list of companies. Let's take a quick peek through some of these trade ideas. First one is going to be on INTC, Intel Corp. We're going to move through them fairly fast uh, because I know the video is probably a little long today. We spent some time talking about psychology. Nonetheless, inside bar on the day session, hammer candle at the 50 SMA, big reversal back to the upside. Because it's an inside bar, we can break out up and over the container bar high, and we're off to the races. Look left, there's thin structure here. Uh, what would a reasonable target be? Well, on the break of 4065, we don't want a fib, we want a regular level. Here we go. Break of 4065, 4070, start looking for this over time around 4225. On a stock price like this, very solid move available here. If it does pull back, you want to see it remain inside the bar for a container and bull flag, something that looks like this. So that is your line in the sand, 39 quarter. Next up on the trade idea list is going to be CSCO, Cisco. Uh, what's going on from this perspective at the top of the range, a little consolidation doji, sort of like a resting bar, two bar setup here is the third going to take it out and continue this momentum to the upside. Maybe if this breaks the top of the range and the 50 SMA at the same time, I would look for the top of this to act as your target at 4577. If it wants to remain in here, that's fine. Keep it on your radar. And then if it breaks down underneath, obviously it's off your radar, um, you know, obviously not a long underneath 4270. Next up, what do we have? WFC is going to be Wells Fargo inside bar setup. Hopefully you can sort of see the theme of today's video inside bar in the upper third of this area right here, watching and monitoring for a breakout there. That would, of course, help the financial sector get a little bit of relative strength. So you're looking for breaks up and over 43 to get us closer to, I would even say that this breakdown could be the first target at 45, uh, 44, excuse me, 60 on the first uh, leg up if we get continuation in the first place, right? So WFC, there's your setup there underneath the 50 SMA with candle closes off my radar. Next up, what do we have after Wells Fargo? This is going to be the last one is PFE. This is actually a short setup, and the reason being is we do have a little bit of relative weakness in the XLV. We saw that in the sector rundown, and you can clearly see, you know, if you were to look at this on like an hourly, maybe it looks like a head and shoulders, but I can see it here on the daily. Maybe you can too. Nonetheless, just a very obvious flush point, right? At 50-50, if it breaks down, I would start targeting this area right in here around 49, so about a dollar and a half move to the downside available inside of PFE uh, off of the head and shoulders play here. So that's going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it or learned anything new today, let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget that the weekly watch this video will be coming out as scheduled on Sunday or, or maybe maybe actually Saturday, maybe Saturday. Um, and uh, with that being said, I, of course, wish you all a green trading week.